These are what happen to you every day if you are a narcissistic abuse victim. Welcome, everyone. In today's video, we're delving into the intricate aftermath of narcissistic abuse, shedding light on the often overlooked behaviors that survivors may grapple with. Have you ever found yourself pondering about the curious peculiarities of individuals who have survived narcissistic abuse? If so, then get geared up for an exciting exploration as we untangle their coping mechanisms. Our goal is to comprehend, not to pass judgment. Narcissistic abuse often leaves its victims in a state of confusion and distress, and the effects can be far-reaching. It's a complex phenomenon that can be difficult to understand if you haven't experienced it firsthand. However, by shedding light on the behaviors and coping mechanisms of survivors, we hope to provide a clearer picture of the intricate aftermath. This revelation may be intense and even uncomfortable at times, but it's a crucial step towards understanding and supporting the survivors of such abuse. Firstly, victims of narcissistic abuse tend to blame themselves excessively. This overwhelming self-blame is a common behavioral pattern among those who have suffered at the hands of narcissists. Narcissists are exceptionally adept at making their victims feel culpable for the torment they inflict. They often resort to manipulative tactics like gaslighting to warp their victims' perception of reality. Consequently, survivors begin to internalize this blame, convincing themselves that they are the problem, even when they are completely innocent. This self-imposed guilt can emotionally immobilize them and impede their healing process, leading to feelings of guilt, shame, and a diminished sense of self-worth. The first step towards breaking free from this vicious cycle is acknowledging that the blame unequivocally lies with the narcissist, not the survivor. Seeking professional therapy and leaning on the support of friends and family can be instrumental in helping survivors reclaim their self-esteem and move forward. While excessive self-blame is indeed a daunting aftermath of narcissistic abuse, it's vital to keep in mind that healing is entirely feasible with the right assistance and understanding. Remember, you are never alone in your quest for recovery. Secondly, victims of narcissistic abuse often exhibit hypervigilance. This trait is routinely observed amongst people who have survived toxic relationships with narcissists. It is characterized by a constant state of alertness, where they are perpetually on the lookout for hints of manipulation or abuse in any interaction or relationship. This behavioral pattern originates from the trauma experienced in such relationships which profoundly disrupts their sense of safety and trust. It serves as a survival mechanism, enabling them to protect themselves from enduring further harm. Unfortunately, this state of hypervigilance can sometimes escalate into borderline paranoia, as survivors become excessively focused on identifying potential warning signs, even in situations where they don't exist. As a result, rebuilding trust becomes an enormous challenge. Therapeutic interventions and support groups can play a pivotal role in helping survivors regain their confidence and learn healthier ways to approach relationships. It's a multifaceted response to a traumatic experience that necessitates time, support, and professional assistance to strike a balance in future relationships. Number 3. A common behavior that survivors of narcissistic abuse develop is a pronounced tendency towards people-pleasing. It is observed that individuals who have had the misfortune of enduring narcissistic abuse often manifest an excessive inclination to keep others' content. This behavior is not an arbitrary development, rather, it is deeply rooted in an ingrained fear of confrontation and rejection that these survivors carry with them. The renowned psychologist Abraham Maslow's theory provides a useful lens to understand this phenomenon. Maslow's theory suggests that the compulsion to please others excessively is grounded in the basic human need for love and belonging. For the victims of narcissistic abuse, their abusive experiences may have left them with a significant deficit of these feelings. Further, the concept of fear of rejection, as introduced by psychologist Albert Ellis, plays a critical role in shaping this behavior. The survivors may harbor anxieties that if they fail to keep others' content, they would be subjected to rejection or criticism. This fear, in many ways, mirrors the experiences they had with the narcissist. While this people-pleasing behavior could serve as a survival mechanism, it is important for survivors to find a balance. They need to ensure that while they cater to the needs of others, they do not neglect their own well-being. 
Number 4. A tendency to isolate oneself is another common behavior among survivors of narcissistic abuse. This tendency is often a reflex born out of the fear of their experiences being misunderstood or disbelieved by others. This fear, when combined with the emotional bonds they may still share with their abuser, feelings of self-blame, and sheer emotional exhaustion, can drive survivors to distance themselves from their social circles. Their goal in doing so is to shield themselves from further emotional harm. During this process, they might also experience a gradual erosion of their self-esteem, leading them to believe they are unworthy of maintaining social connections. While isolation might serve as a defense mechanism and a coping strategy, breaking free from this pattern is a critical step towards recovery from narcissistic abuse. It becomes essential for survivors to seek support from therapists and join support groups. This allows them to connect with individuals who can empathize with their experiences and provide the understanding and validation they yearn for. Psychologist Dr. Ramani Dervasila emphasizes that forging connections with others is a significant stride towards recovery. Number 5. Survivors of narcissistic abuse often find themselves wrestling with boundary issues. These issues can manifest themselves in a variety of ways, from allowing others to disrespect their boundaries to reacting excessively when their boundaries are approached. This behavior can be traced back to the psychological consequences of enduring a narcissistic relationship. Psychologists like Dr. Christine Lewis de Cannonville and Dr. Judith Proof have extensively studied this phenomenon. They suggest that survivors might permit others to infringe upon their boundaries because they've grown accustomed to such treatment. Alternatively, they might react defensively to any perceived threat to their personal space due to their history of boundary violations. Understanding and addressing these boundary issues is a crucial step towards healing and re-establishing healthier relationships for survivors of narcissistic abuse. Point 6. People who have suffered narcissistic abuse frequently experience chronic self-doubt. This chronic self-doubt often surfaces as a repercussion of the narcissistic abuse they have endured. Dr. Ramani Dervasula highlights that narcissists employ manipulative tactics such as gaslighting and constant criticism to undermine their victim's self-esteem and confidence. As a result, survivors find themselves questioning their judgment and reality, seeking external validation to fill the emptiness created by their self-doubt. This pervasive doubt can lead to paralysis in decision-making and obstruct their personal growth. Overcoming chronic self-doubt necessitates therapeutic interventions and participation in support groups. Dr. Judith Proof proposes that survivors must focus on rebuilding their self-esteem and regaining trust in their judgment. Learning to be self-compassionate and surrounding oneself with individuals who provide validation can help mitigate the damaging effects of narcissistic abuse. Point 7. Another common trait among narcissistic abuse victims is the tendency to apologize compulsively. Experts believe that this compulsive apologizing behavior of survivors serves as a defensive mechanism. It is a behavior that develops from the dynamics of abusive relationships, where victims continue to shoulder the responsibility for the actions or emotions of the narcissist. This habit aids survivors in avoiding conflicts with the narcissist and maintaining a fragile sense of peace. However, it's also tied to low self-esteem. As the narcissist's constant criticism and manipulation gradually erode their sense of self-worth. To break away from the cycle of compulsive apologizing, therapeutic intervention, and the rebuilding of self-esteem are crucial. Point 8. People who have been victims of narcissistic abuse have a tendency to idealize new relationships. When people manage to break free from abusive relationships with narcissists, they often hurriedly enter new ones, idealizing their new partners. This behavior, known as the rebound effect, is common among survivors. In their desperation for happiness and validation, they set unrealistic expectations by viewing their new partner through rose-colored glasses, seeing them as perfect. Dr. Ramani Derbasila cautions survivors that in their eagerness to avoid red flags, they might overlook potential problems in their new relationships. This is a significant point to remember as they navigate life after narcissistic abuse. Our ninth point of discussion centers around the phenomenon known as the imposter syndrome. This is a widespread psychological pattern where individuals are plagued by persistent self-doubt, 
often feeling like frauds, despite having clear evidence of their abilities and accomplishments. The term imposter syndrome was first coined by psychologists Dr. Pauline Clance and Dr. Suzanne Imes in the late 70s. They noted that this syndrome is particularly prevalent among high achievers. Now, when it comes to survivors of narcissistic abuse, they are particularly susceptible to the imposter syndrome. The reason is that the manipulative and demeaning behavior of narcissists often leads to their victims doubting their own capabilities and internalizing negative, harmful messages about themselves. As renowned psychologist Dr. Valerie Young once pointed out, the feeling of being an imposter is almost universal, something that everyone has experienced at some point in their lives. Importantly, it's essential to understand that imposter syndrome isn't a reflection of one's incompetence. Instead, it's more of a psychological idiosyncrasy that can be addressed and managed. Strategies and therapeutic techniques can be extremely helpful in overcoming this syndrome, and seeking support from trusted sources is of vital importance. After all, everyone deserves to acknowledge their achievements and feel confident in their abilities. Moving on to our tenth point, we delve into another common aftermath of narcissistic abuse, the difficulty in expressing emotions. It's not uncommon for survivors to find it challenging to articulate their feelings, sometimes even to themselves. This tendency towards emotional repression is often a coping mechanism that develops during the abusive relationship to protect themselves from the narcissist's negative reactions. Dr. Ramani Dervasila provides insight into this issue, explaining that the overpowering and controlling behavior of narcissists often leads their victims to question their own emotions and instincts. This results in an emotional disconnect where survivors struggle to express their feelings openly. It's worth noting that this difficulty in expressing emotions can have roots in childhood experiences as well. The term childhood emotional neglect was coined by Dr. John Ice Webb to describe a similar phenomenon, indicating that emotional neglect during childhood, especially in families with narcissistic parents, can lead to lifelong emotional challenges. In light of our discussions about the unusual behaviors that often manifest in survivors of narcissistic abuse, it is crucial to remember that the adverse effects of such emotional manipulation can run deep, affecting one's mental and emotional health in profound ways. If you, or someone close to you, find yourself grappling with these behaviors after extricating yourself from the clutches of an abusive relationship, know that it's perfectly okay. It's a part of the healing process, a testament to your resilience and strength. However, it's crucial to understand that recognizing these behaviors is the first step towards recovery. While it may be disconcerting, or even scary, to identify these behaviors in yourself or someone close to you, it's an essential part of the healing journey. Remember, healing isn't a linear process, it comes with its ups and downs, and that's perfectly okay. There is no right or wrong way to heal, what matters is that you're moving forward, even if it's just a little bit each day. Moreover, acknowledging these behaviors is only half the journey. It's equally important to seek help. There is a myriad of resources available out there, from professional therapists to support groups, all ready to provide the assistance and guidance you'll need on this journey. You don't have to do this alone. In fact, seeking help can significantly speed up the healing process, providing you with the tools and techniques needed to navigate your emotions and behaviors effectively. Finally, remember that healing from narcissistic abuse is a journey, not a destination. You may find yourself exhibiting strange behaviors along the way, but that's okay. It's part of the process, a sign that you're working through the trauma and moving towards a healthier, happier state of being. It's crucial to be patient with yourself during this time, giving yourself the grace and space to heal at your own pace. So, if you recognize any of these behaviors in yourself or a loved one, do not despair. There is hope, and there is help available. Numerous individuals have walked this path before you and have emerged stronger and happier on the other side. You, too, can do the same. Remember, it's not about how quickly you can get there, but about the journey itself. The path to recovery might be challenging but with the right support and resources, you can navigate it successfully.